Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. In this video, we will be making realistic FPV drone footage. Here you can see a drone is flying around and just whip panning around. It just feels so alive, this motion of moving around in the forest like that. And here's another example. So this is what we'll be creating today. This drone flying around, following a curve, being really heavy and just moving around in nature. So I'll be working in Blender version 3.6 and we're gonna start out by deleting the cube and the light and we'll be keeping the camera because we're going to animate this camera using a curve. So let's view this from the top and let's go Shift A and let's make a curve, a Bezier if you like, and you can press Tab to go to edit mode and X to delete the vertices. And then over here, you can click draw. And now you can just draw the path of your draw. So just draw something like this. Yeah, that's good. Now let's move this on the Z axis. So let's press G and then Z. And now this will be the path of our drone. So let's have a look at our camera. If it's going to be an FPV camera, it needs to be a lot more wide angle. So let's go to object data properties and let's set the focal length to something really wide, like yeah, 17 millimeters is good. And now we wanna make the camera follow the curve. But if you were to just use a constraint on the camera like this, and then you just move the camera around, maybe even you make it follow the curve like this. Hang on, let me just make a ground plane there so you can see the texture. Look at this. There's no FPV camera that moves like this. You can obviously tell that this is made with 3D software, right? There's no weight to it. There's no intention. There's no pilot here trying to figure out where to navigate. So we want to add some weight to this camera and we're going to do that using a physics simulation. So let's go Shift A and let's make an empty object and let's set this to sphere. And this will be our camera point of interest. So let's take this empty object and let's give it the object constraint called follow path and let's set the target to be the curve. So now we can change this offset and it's following the curve. So let's select the camera and let's delete the follow path and let's add a track to constraint and set it to the camera point of interest. So now our camera is always pointing towards the point of interest. So we'll animate the camera later. So let's just press H to hide the camera. And now let's take the camera point of interest and animate it. So let's set the offset to zero and let's go to the first frame and let's click this little keyframe icon. And based on the amount of turns here, I think we should do 500 frames. So let's set it to frame 500. You can press Control end to set end frame. And now if you click and drag on the offset, you can see that the lowest value is minus 100. So now click this little icon to animate the property. And now when you scrub through the timeline, you can see that it's moving. But right now, this has a Bezier curve. So we wanna change this to be linear. So hold your mouse down here and press A to select both keyframes. And you can go Shift E, for example, and go linear extrapolation. So now this will have an even speed at all times. And it will even keep going after your animation if you need that. So let's bring back our camera by pressing Alt H. And now if you move the timeline, you can see that the camera is always pointing towards this point of interest. And that's exactly what we want. So now let's turn our point of interest into a force field. So let's go to physics properties and let's click force field. And now nothing happens because we have to add a rigid body object. So let's go shift A and let's make a mesh cube. And this cube doesn't really have to be a solid. So if you go to object properties and you go down to viewport display, you can change it to wire. So now the cube will always just be in wireframe. And now let's select our camera point of interest and go shift S cursor to selected. And now you can select your cube and go Shift S, selection to cursor. And let's actually bring the camera as well. So select the camera, go Shift S, selection to cursor. And now you can see that the camera, the cube, and the point of interest all share the exact same location. So now we want to take the camera, hold down Shift and select the cube, and then go Control P, parent to object. So now what you can do is you can move the cube behind a little bit, like this. So now you can still move the cube around and the camera will always be looking at the point of interest. So now we're going to use Blender's amazing rigid body tools to add some weight to our camera. Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members who come together to find inspiration and take their next step in their creative journey. And what's really cool about Skillshare is that there are a surprising amount of Blender creators there. For example, Derek Elliott, the furniture legend, has got some amazing classes on product animation, interior design and 3D modeling. You know I already love his YouTube content and I gotta say his classes on Skillshare is some seriously high quality stuff. So I highly recommend checking that out. And also Bad Normals has some great classes on Skillshare as well. He's got some really interesting geometry nodes project where you can learn how to make a raspberry or a medieval castle all fully procedural, really impressive and cool stuff. I've also been taking this class called ChatGPT for Creatives by Peggy Dean because I want to learn how to get more out of ChatGPT as a creator and how I can speed up the boring parts of my workflow using AI. And that's been really valuable actually. 
So the first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So check out the link in the description to learn more. Now let's get back to the video. So select the cube and let's go object, rigid body, add active. But if you press play now, it just falls right to the ground. So let's go to scene properties and let's just disable gravity. And now if you press play, something really cool happens. Look at that. Do you see that? If we zoom in here, this cube is being pushed away by the force field. And this is because the force field has a positive force. So if you select the force field and you go to physics, now you can see the strength is set to one, but if you set it to minus one and you zoom really far in, now you can see we are following the force field. So from here on out, this becomes a tweaking exercise of getting these values right. So I recommend starting at a strength of minus 300. And now you can see this is following. Okay, nice. But this feels a little bit like it's on really slippery ice. So to make this physics animation feel less slippery, we can select the force field and you can increase this flow value. So let's try and set this to one, for example. It's still not behaving exactly how I want it to be. So we're gonna to have to tweak this a little bit further. Let's try and uh, increase the strength to maybe 450. And let's set the flow to 1.2 or something. One way to get a little bit of a smoother motion is select the path and press tab to go to edit mode. Press V and set the handle type to automatic. So now all these points are a lot smoother and they will also stay smooth if you tweak them. So let's get back to object mode and press play. I think maybe the force field is too strong. Let's do minus 200. Okay, nice. Now we, we might actually be getting somewhere. Oh, you see that? It stops at frame 250. And that's because that's the default range of the rigid body cache. So if you go to the scene properties and under rigid body world and cache, you can increase the cache end. So let's do 500, for example. So now it will keep going after frame 250. You know, I think the problem here is that the force field isn't moving fast enough. Like our point of interest is moving too slow. So I want to select our point of interest and under here on the timeline, you can select just one of the keyframes at the end here and then press G and move it to maybe frame 300 instead. Yes, yeah, so now it's moving a lot faster, which I think I like that. So now we can try and increase the strength again. So let's do minus 300 maybe. Yeah, look at that. If I select the camera now so you can see. Yeah, now we're getting this really cool whipping back and forth. And then if you like, you can easily just keep tweaking this. So I want to view this from above and you can select one of the points in edit mode and you can press G and move them around. Now we have a little bit of a bigger loop here. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I think I want this to be bigger as well. I want it to go out here a little bit. Yeah, that's cool. Let me bring back this plane I added just so we can see what this looks like. Yeah, this feels a lot more like a drone movement. And I feel like I can, I can feel the heaviness of the drone. I think I actually want to make it a little bit more slippery. So let's set the flow to maybe 1.1. Yeah, and let's increase the strength a little bit more, maybe 380. Okay, so why I think this method is just so brilliant, and I've been thinking a lot about this, when you have like a long direction, like a flat line like this, it will go really fast. Look at this. The motion is fast on these straight lines, but then once you get around the corner, it slows down, and then you get these slow rotations, and then it will speed up again on the long lines. That is such a cool way to just get some natural motion. Okay, so now I think this is starting to come together. Oh, you see that? This movement feels... Yeah, look at that. It feels a little bit jagged. And that is because... Yeah, here you can see... You have these lines. These curves are actually quite low poly. So if you go to the object data properties, you can change the resolution preview to, for example, 32. And now we have more data, so it will be a smoother curve. Now, there's one really important thing missing for this drone's movement, and that's the motion on the z-axis. So, let's select our point of interest, and let's right-click, vertical split, and let's set this editor type to graph editor, and let's press N to bring up this panel, and now you can see you can manipulate the z-axis, the z-location. And we want this to move up and down like this. So, let's right-click and go insert single keyframe. And now, in this editor, let's open up this, and here you can see you have the z-location. And now, we can select this, and you can go to modifiers, add modifier, noise. 
And now if you press play, you can see that this goes crazy up and down and that's exactly what we want. But we don't want it to be that fast. Let's uh, set the scale to maybe 18. Now you can see it's like going up and forth like that. 30 or something is good. Look at this. Look at how much more alive it looks right now. Because it's going up and down a little bit more. Like someone is struggling to keep this drone flying. I really like this. And remember, this is just with a 2D plane on the ground. So this effect gets a lot more interesting when you actually add some uh, objects that it can be whipping around. Okay, so I really think this animation is coming together. Look at that. It actually feels like there's this heavy drone following something or it's actually flying around this scene. Yeah, I really like it. So I want to save this animation. Or I want to I bake the physics simulation. So let's select our physics objects and let's go to scene properties. And under rigid body world and cache, let's just click bake. So now all our animation, you can see it changed the color here. Now we can move this around and scrub on our timeline as much as we want and we won't lose our animation. Okay, so now at this point in the video, if you want to, you can just use cubes and cylinders and make this sort of an abstract render, but I really want to go for photorealism today. So I'm going to use some photorealistic assets. And I got this really nice add-on called Botanic by Polygonic. It has a library of a bunch of trees and grass and everything. So I'll be using this. There'll be a link in the description if you want to check it out. Okay, so I'm just going to click Spawn Asset and under Category, I'm going to go Coniferous. Coniferous? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Latin names here, so I'm going to mess this up. But uh, this one looks really cool, I think. It has some nice density at the bottom, which I really like. So let's click this and let's go OK. And now we have this tree in our scene. So now to move this around, you can press G and then Shift Z. You can also just view it from above and place the trees like this. So if we move over here, you can see I want the tree here. And then I'm just going to make a bunch of copies. I'm just going to go Shift D and move one over there. And then maybe here. Yeah, I'm basically just trying to make it not crash into these trees, you know? Maybe I should actually open up my viewport here and have the camera in this one. So I can see duplicating this here. Okay, nice. I want it to be, I want it to like go around it like that. Yeah, that's cool. And I'm just going to be keep duplicating this. And then over here. Yeah, I want it to go around another tree like that. Oh yeah, look at that. And then it's, oh, and it's just passing by. Yeah, that's cool. It looks like someone is actually trying to dodge this. And now you might be thinking, all these trees are just so uniform. If you select one of them, you can go select, select pattern, just search for the tree name. Like this, now you've got all the trees selected. If you bring up the add-on again, you can go random transform and then randomize variant. Oh, that's, uh, that's a lot of big ones. Maybe we can scale it down. Is that cheating? Oh yeah, look at that. When it goes under like that, <gasps> that looks really impressive. But no, it might actually be too big. I want to yeah, randomize it so it's smaller. We just want to get some really close, like you're, you're getting so close that you're like watching this and thinking, wow, that's, that's really impressive. <laughs> you know, that's the goal with this. Is it possible to, maybe, oh, maybe? Yeah, we're going just through the, oh no, it's a lot wider. Oh, I was zoomed in. Hang on, let me just, let me enable the, this one. Yeah, okay, so now I got the whole camera here. I think we're actually going to just stop the animation when we got over there. Let's just control end it at uh, 315, yeah. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to just add some more stuff. Another type of tree, maybe a bigger one. This one. Oh, it's low. Oh, that's a big one. Okay, nice. Yeah, let's just uh, place a bunch of these around here, I guess. That might actually work. Look, let's just uh, let's just have a look. These are some big trees. Yeah, that helps. That's going to help with the horizon. Okay, look at that. Something smaller. Maybe this thing. That, that's good. Yeah, let's do some of these. Let's also do some of these. Hang on, I just want to do everything except for these. So I want to hide this. And now I can select all and uh, random transform and randomize variant, right? Maybe one more. Yeah, these are too big. Okay, so we're getting a nice forest here. And let's bring this back. And we also want them to be open a little bit because we want the sunlight to come in from one angle, like maybe in here or something, but we'll come back to that. Oh, these are the big ones, aren't they? Oh, these are really big ones. Are they too big? Or do we get like a really nice, look at that huge one there. I want to try this one. Summer, oh, are this, this is autumn. Oh, these are all autumn. So we have to be in the right, uh, this one is autumn. Yeah, let's do this one. Oh, that's so big. Ah. Oh. Yeah, that's cool, I guess. Let's just... <laughs> There's a pattern here, I guess. Wow, that is... 
I mean, when you're looking at it from in here, it looks very like constructed, but when you're in here, it like it feels. For some reason, it makes sense that they are bigger the further away they are. It looks like a really big forest. Yeah, or at least so I'm told. I haven't touched grass since. Uh, let's go random transform random as variant. Yeah, those are a little bit smaller. I like that. Okay, nice. Let's just get rid of this one. And let's move this in here. Yeah, let's do one more of these. And I think I want to do... Yeah, let's try this one. This seems to be like a nice bush size. And I feel like I feel like the drone will fly over this. If we place it here. Yeah, look at that. That's important. I have no idea if these even grow on the same continent. But uh, I guess someone in the comment will, will let me know. Let's go select. Select pattern. Uh, this one is called tree. And then you can just search for this. Okay, now we got all of these. And uh, random transform, randomized variant. Yeah, look at that. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, wait. What has happened here? What's this? Oh, it's a tall one. I didn't know that. Okay, let's maybe place it here then. Oh, yeah, let's place it even closer. And let's get this out of the way. Oh, yes. This drone operator is getting really pro. <laughs> oh. That's too close. Where is this one? Should it go left or right? Yeah, it should go here. Oh, <laughs> look at that. It's flying through this place. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's getting so close all the time. Okay, now for the cherry on top. Let's go shift A and make a plane. A ground plane. Scale this up. I'm going to scale this up a lot. I think this is going to be good. Oh, it's a 60 meter plane. So we are going to get a lot of grass. So now let's select the plane and uh, under scatter here, we're going to click plus and we're going to set it to grass and then just a basic grass. And then let's go OK. And now we just have a lot of grass in our scene and my computer is starting to uh, tell me that it's getting hot in here, but which is OK. I think I want to have some more particles because now it says it's 71,000 particles. And according to my previous attempts, it's possible to have a lot more particles than uh, just 71,000. So I want to increase the particles per square meter to maybe 14. Yeah, how many particles is it now? Uh, for, what, 40? Oh, no, wait, it should be more. Yeah, let's do 35. Okay, recalculate. Nice, now we're capped at 100,000. Hang on, this is getting too slow. Let's just disable this. Okay, I want to add some, uh, just some randomness. So let's right click subdivide. Uh, and let's include, let's do some fractal, just a little bit, let's do maybe 25. Okay, that's good. Okay, I think we're getting ready to start rendering this, so let's go to render view, and oh, we have to change it to cycles, and it's completely black because we have no lights. So let's set this editor type to shader editor, and let's set it to world. And now here we have our background, and we're going to go shift A, and we're going to search for sky texture, and let's click and drag this into the color. Wait, why isn't it? Oh yes, it's completely black because we have a cube surrounding our camera. <laughs> That's why. So if we zoom out, yeah, here we can see we, <laughs> we have this stupid cube flying around. So we want to see through this cube, go to object properties and under visibility, you can just disable all of these. So yeah, it's nothing anymore. Yeah, okay, so now set it to camera view. We can actually see it from the camera. Okay, nice. It's so open. I thought it would be, it would be more closed because of all these trees. Let's just duplicate. Uh, I'm just making a circle around us. And you know, the worst part is it's going to work. Yeah, we're just closing up this entire thing with just trees. And let's randomize variant and raise a random transform. Here, for example, we have to close this area. I just want to make like a forest because it's just, yeah, see this? It's just so ugly. By the way, to figure out the empty places, you can just scrub through like this and you can see, ah, it's empty there. And then you can hold on shift and right click to place the 3D cursor. And now you will see, oh, that's the 3D cursor. Ah, I can see the camera. So that's where it's open. So now we can just close off this area. Okay, and there's another area, which is, uh, where, there it is. Okay, so look at this, here you can see. Oh, there's an open area, but look at that. Shoop. <laughs> oh, there's another one. Shoop. Oh, there's a big one. Place them here. Oh, there it is, more. 
Okay, so let's view this from above here and let's uh, select our sky texture and now we can lower the sun elevation. So let's change our sun elevation to maybe seven degrees. Now look at this beautiful sunset that we're getting. And now we can adjust the rotation. And I basically, I want as much light as possible on the ground. So I want to find like an open area. Um, maybe, maybe there. Because then you get these beautiful highlights on the leaves. And if you ask me, that just helps with the mood and the photorealism. Okay, now let's turn on the grass again. And this is going to look amazing. Yes, look at that. Look at these beautiful light rays coming in. And look at this area. This just looks so real. Yeah, that is, I'm getting really, really excited about this. But there's one more thing that we we're missing. Because this camera is still not like an FPV camera. We need the fish eye effect. So let's select our camera and let's go to object data properties. And under lens, let's change the type from perspective to panoramic. So now we can increase the lens size here. And you might notice that it stops at 15 degrees, but that's just a soft lock. So you can manually type in 18, for example, maybe, you know, maybe 19, because it's not that cool if it's too wide angle. Okay, now let's do a still frame. Yeah, let's go ahead and go uh, F12 to render a still frame. Ay, ay, ay. That is just so cool. Okay, we're at 300 samples. I think that at maybe 250 samples, that's good enough. By the way, I forgot to say I have enabled motion blur, which I can highly recommend. It's going to increase the render time just a little bit, but it's definitely worth it. Look at this beautiful... Uh, yeah, look at that. That just looks amazing. But I think it's too much motion blur. So let's uh, lower it a little bit. Let's do a 0 0.25, which is like a 90 degree shutter angle. Okay, so now let's render this out as an animation. But I don't want to do like a cinematic render today. I just want to do a garbage quality render. I want it to be like a dirty, low resolution, not even HD. So let's go to output properties and let's set our resolution to 640 by 480, which is like this old fashioned, not even HD. It's, I think it's VGA or something. Yeah, but this just gives this truly vintage quality. Okay, let's do a test render here. Okay, so two things. I want to turn off the denoiser because it feels a little bit too artificial. And I also want to lower the sample count because 512 is too much. So let's just do 256 and now let's render this. Okay, so now the denoiser is disabled, but there's going to be a problem. Let me just go and advance one frame and let's set this to render slot 2. And let's do another render. And now let me show you something really interesting. Cycles is actually using the same noise pattern for both of these renders. So if you go back and forth between one and two, you can press one and two. It's a little bit difficult to see here, but this is the same noise pattern. So if you were to render this out as an animation right now, it would look like there was some sort of film on top of this noise. And we don't want that. We want it to be a new noise every frame. So in our render properties, let's go down to advanced, head over to this seed parameter, and let's just enable this little stopwatch icon. So now every frame, let me show you, is going to have a new seed value for the noise. Here you can see. And this just gives a really beautiful noise, very similar to the digital noise that you get in these FPV cameras. So we don't have to emulate our own noise. We can just use the noise in Blender, which is really cool. Okay, so now let's go ahead and render this out as an animation. But there's one thing that I want to do. I want to add a lot of glow and I want to add a lot of sharpening. Now you might be thinking, to get this really old-fashioned vintage FPV look, we need to use the compositor. And that is correct. But if we were to use the compositor right away, like in this project file, the sharpening would look a lot different. And that's a little bit difficult to explain, but it just boils down to that the white values in this scene are currently too bright. So we have to render this out as a PNG sequence in order to just flatten all the bright areas, because if not, the sharpening will just not look the same. So to render this out, I'm just going to make a folder on my desktop. I'm just going to call this FPV raw version 1. And then let's call this FPV version 1. And then let's go accept. So now I'm just going to leave the file format as PNG because we don't want these really bright highlights. Oh, one tip before we render, let's go to render properties. And under performance, you want to enable persistent data because that's going to keep all this data from these large trees and all these assets around in the scene. And it's going to make the render a lot faster. But if you're crashing, you should disable it. Okay, so the render has started and I'm going to pause the recording and I'll see you when it's finished. Okay, so the render has finished and the temperature in my room has increased significantly. It took roughly 25 minutes 
with the RTX 4090. I rendered at 640 by 480 and 315 frames. Now I'm going to make a new blend file. So I'm going to go control N and just go general. And then I'm just going to go to compositing up here. So now we're going to use these nodes, click use nodes. And we're going to use this compositor to give this digital low quality look to this render. So I'm going to delete this render layers and I'm going to go shift A input image. And then here you can see, I'm going to click open and I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to find the sequence. I'm going to click the first frame and press A and then open image. So now here's our image sequence and I'm going to click this image and drag it into image. And now we can't see anything. So I'm going to hold down control and shift and then left click on this. And that will create a viewer node. Okay, so if you're new to the compositor, these nodes will transfer the data from here into here. So this composite is where our final render will be saved. And then we're using this viewer to just view whatever we want. So you can hold down control and shift and click on what you want to see. Okay, so now our colors are all wrong. And that's because by default, the color management is set to filmic and we should have it as standard because we're working with the PNG sequence. So now this look correct and you can hold down alt and middle mouse click to move this around and to make it bigger or smaller, you can press V or alt V. But you can also go to view and change the zoom to, for example, 1.5. Okay, so here we have our animation and the animation is 315 frames long. So let's go to our end and set this to 315 and then let's zoom out so we can see. Okay, so I want to use the compositor to make it look like this was shot on a really old digital sensor. So first what we need to do is we need to lower the dynamic range and a really nice way to do that is to add some glare so let's go shift a and let's add some glare and let's place it in between the image and the composite node and now you can see we can't really see any difference and that's because the viewer is what we see so if you want to see the node you have to hold down control and shift and then click on the glare node if we lower the mix and we lower the threshold now you can see you got this glare effect so i want to start off by making it into a fog glow now let's do a threshold of yeah, maybe 0.2 and let's set the mix to minus 0.4 is good. And I wanted to duplicate this by pressing shift D and let's do another one where we set it to low. So now it looks like the highlights here are a little bit blown out and I want to do one more over here. Oop. And I want to set this to high and I want to set the size to nine. And I want the threshold for this one to be zero and I want the mix to be really low something like this. Yeah, these are the three glare nodes I want to use. Yeah, you can take a screenshot if you like. So now I want to add a uh, vignette, like a um, like an area that goes darker around the corner. And it's, I want it to be bright in the center and dark towards the corner. So to do this, we're going to make a mask. So let's click this little plus icon up here and go VFX masking. And then we're going to have to open our image sequence again. So let's click open and let's just find our image sequence. Let's import this. And now we're going to make a mask. So let's go add and then click circle. And now we have a circle here. I'm just gonna place it in the center. I'm gonna scale it up. And then you can go to mask display here and turn on overlay. And you're gonna hold on Alt S and we're just gonna feather this. And you can press S to scale it down and you can feather it with Alt S. And you get this really smooth feather. That's what I want. And now let's call this mask for vignette. Let's go back to compositing and let's go Shift A, input mask. So let's select the mask node and let's change this to vignette. And now if you hold down control shift to change the viewer, you can see that the mask is really big. It's a lot bigger than our footage. So to make our mask the same size as our footage, let's head over to output properties and let's change our resolution to be the render resolution of our sequence, which is 640 by 480. And now let's go shift A, distort scale. And now we can set this to render size. So now we can see that these have the same size. Okay, so now we have our vignette and there are many ways to turn this into an actual vignette for our footage. And I like to use just a simple exposure node. So let's go shift A, color, exposure, and let's place it after the first glow. And let's uh, just click and drag this into the exposure. And now you can see it gets a lot brighter in here, uh, which is probably too bright. So let's duplicate it and let's just go minus 0.6 is probably good for now. Maybe, maybe minus one. So it's like a little bit underexposed almost. And now what I want to do is that I want to add some smudge just a spot at the side here, like some smudge over here. So to do that, we're going to make another mask. So let's go over to masking again. And now we're in the vignette mask again, but let's just click X to close this. And now let's click new and we're going to call this smudge. And now everything is black and that's because we have to disable overlay again. And now I just want to draw a smudge here. So let me just find a good place. Doesn't, yeah, okay here. So I want to just hold down control and click and drag and then just draw like a smudge shape. 
just imagine that someone has touched the lens of the camera, you know? Okay, and now let's uh, head over to the mask display and enable the overlay again. And now select the mask and press Alt S and increase the feathering. And you can actually change the feathering for each point, which is really powerful. And then you can press G and R to rotate and move these points around. Yeah, so I just want to make this really small smudge thing over here. So now let's set this back to overlay. By the way, remember to save your compositing blend file since it's a new blend file. Okay, so now we got our smudge mask. So let's go back to compositing. Let's just duplicate this mask setup here. And let's make some space. And I want to duplicate one of these glare nodes. And I want to go Shift A, Color Mix. And I want to just mix one version of just the render and then one version of the render with glare. So here you can see you have one with glare and one without. And then let's set this glare to streaks. And I want to increase the iterations. I'll set it to medium maybe. Let's lower the threshold. Oh, let's lower the color mode as well. And then let's set the streaks to two. And then let's set the angle offset to 90 degrees. But they're all over the place. So we want to limit the smudge to just be on our smudge mask. So let's use this mix color node. And here you can see we have our, oh no, that's the vignette. We have to change this to smudge. Yeah, so if you change this to smudge, here you can see you have our smudge mask. And now, <laughs> smudge mask. <laughs> and, <laughs> and now if you click and drag it from here over to the factor of the mix node, now you can see we have a little bit of smudge just right over here. And it's not much, but it doesn't have to be much. It's just a little bit. I want to increase it a little bit in strength. Let's uh, find the mix here. Let's actually set the mix to maybe zero. Okay, so now you can see it's not that much. It's just a little bit. Okay, so these are the settings I have for this uh, smudge glare. Okay, but now for the big trick, which is essentially this entire effect. And that is a lot of sharpening. And I mean a lot of sharpening. So let's go Shift A, Filter, filter and then let's place it in between the compositing node and let's press Control shift and then let's have a look at it and now let's change this from soften to diamond sharpen and look at that now we have this extremely sharpened image and when you export this as a video this sharpen will be like reduced a little bit because of the video compression and that just it just really makes this an amazing effect i want to do a little bit of color corrections let's go color RGB curves and I want to just place one here and just lift the shadows just a little bit Yeah, I want the shadows to be just a little bit flat, you know, okay So the sharpening looks absolutely insane right now. I agree But once we export this as a video the video compression will get rid of a little bit of that noise and sharpening hang on one idea I got now maybe we should just desaturate this a little bit maybe no maybe, maybe a little bit more subtle Just a little bit of subtle desaturation. Okay, so let me just take you through what we did we took our footage which looks like this and then we applied just a basic glare node to it. Oh wait, we forgot something really important. We need to add just a lens distortion node. This will add some chromatic aberration to the edges here. So let's set the dispersion to, yeah, look at that. That just looks real. That's, yeah, I can't believe I forgot that. Okay, nice. Okay, so now let me take you through this. And then we have just this default fog glow that I always use, maybe like this, okay. And then we have our vignette, which brightens it a little bit at the center. And then we make it darker again because we have so much glow. And then we add a smudge. This smudge is not like a real lens flare, it's just a little bit of smudge, like someone touched the lens, you know, before filming. Well, maybe when they were adjusting the drone, you know. Okay, and then we have the first glare node, which is just designed to make it a little bit lower dynamic range, or just to show that the sensor has some cheap glass. You can maybe even increase the size a little bit more here. And then the second one, yeah, let's increase the size more on this one as well. And then we have just a little bit of color correction, just to lift the shadows a little bit. And we have a really subtle desaturation. And then we have this hard, hard sharpen. So that is the node setup. So now we're gonna render this out as a video, and it's really important to not choose the highest bitrate, because we want that video compression to do a little bit of work for us. So let's go to output properties, and let's change our file format from PNG to FFmpeg video. And then under encoding, let's change the container to MPEG4. And then let's keep the quality at medium quality. And you want to increase the keyframe interval. So maybe do like 30. Then you get a little bit of longer duration between each time the video compression sort of refreshes. Which is a really cool effect, I think. Okay, so let's set our output folder to desktop FPV drone version 1. And now let's just press Ctrl F12 and it will be rendered as a video. Okay, so the render is finished. Let's have a look. Nice. That, that looks so real. Oh my god. 
Yeah, I'm so happy about that. That looked even better than I thought it would. And I probably, you know, I probably should have added the shadow of the drone. I forgot that. This just looks so cool. You know, the video compression here is just doing a lot of the heavy lifting. That is, yeah, I just really liked. And the smudge as well. Look at this up here. That's like, yeah. Okay, so that's it. Now, if you don't have the Botanic add-on, don't worry, I've made this abstract project file available for free download in the description of this video. It's gonna have the camera following the path with the rigid body system that we set up. And if you don't have the Botanic add-on and wanna check it out, it's gonna be an affiliate link in the description. I can highly recommend this add-on. And I also did an HD render of this project where I added some buildings in the background just to get rid of that infinite horizon look. And for these buildings, I used an add-on called Real City, which is this geometry node setup that allows you to make these really customizable buildings and I wouldn't say these work like completely up close but that's okay because this is just some great background buildings I think. So the scene that we ended up making today was pretty much the same that I did for my Blender conference presentation which is out on YouTube. I was really happy about talking to so many enthusiastic Blender artists at this conference. It was really amazing. But yeah I'm really excited about this drone flying animation technique these days and I'm really excited to see what you'll create with this. Thanks for watching!